Hey everybody, it's Steve from The Pinball Room. Welcome back. We are five days away from the show. Five days. Today, tomorrow, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday we hit the road, head up to Tacoma, Washington. So we still got lots to do. I'm getting even more anxious <laughs> to make sure we'll have something worth playable. Um, I'm gonna go through right now this morning. I'm waiting for a couple more things to be delivered from Pinball Life. And I'm gonna work on a few more of the final mechanical things we need to do. Namely, I wanna get our shooter rod in, the plunger get that located so we need to cut out a spot for that down here in the cabinet we'll move the camera so you can see it here in a second we need to get that up and running i want to get the um the screen in and connected and running off the laptop so we can be seeing our score and things like that i'm hoping that we can also maybe get the speakers hooked up today and just hear some sort of basic sound and get that moving but uh yeah that's kind of the focus for today that i want to get through for the rest of this video i'm not even sure what all we'll cram in here i'm sorry i know the videos have been kind of long recently i just haven't had the time to be doing as much editing so i've just kind of been cramming like a week's worth of stuff in there and shoving it out to you guys. So I appreciate you sticking with me and watching. Um, probably not as well as edited and, and focused as some of my earlier videos. Hopefully there's still some nuggets of information that's making them enjoyable for you guys. Anyway, I appreciate you coming along for the ride. So yeah, let's get to it. We're gonna start by going through and getting this plunger rod in and then we'll just go a step at a time and see where we end up, okay? All right, here we go. All right, so I'm removing the lockdown bar just to make sure that's kind of out of the way while we get in here because we've got to go through again with our jigsaw and just start cutting out wood. You can see kind of the pencil marks I've gone through and measured off my Simpsons pinball party. The size of the hole is kind of this triangular curve shape where there's a little bit of room to kind of wiggle the shooter rod up, down, left, right a little bit so you can align, align it exactly to your play field. That's one of the things you want to make sure that how your play field ends up finally sitting that your plunger rod, you then kind of adjust a couple millimeters, you know, left or right, et cetera, to where it's lining up and gonna be hitting the ball square through that auto plunger mechanism and not hitting anything else and giving it a clean shot. So we're gonna go through and drill a couple holes, get our um, spot started for our blade, um, for our jigsaw and cut it out and then we'll file it down, get it good. And then we've got a plate that's used to go on the inside that then we'll screw into the plunger rod it matches up. There's three holes here that line up to the three main holes here with the screws that we'll put into it. All right, so that's the rough process and then we'll time lapse on through it for you guys. All right, so we got the spot all kind of cut out and filed out. Again, kind of this round area. I filed here along the top, give it just enough room. There's just a little bit of wiggle room back and forth. And then this plate goes in on the other side, like we talked about, right? I got that in there, got it holding in place, brought the play field down, made sure it's lined up, saw exactly where I wanted this to be, and then traced around it with pencil. So when I'm screwing it in, I can kind of make sure it's going to the right place. Um, yeah, the other thing I guess I want to point out is for this bracket, so there's these um, three screws, okay, that are going to screw into the actual plunger assembly. And this, by pulling on these two, will kind of sandwich it against your cabinet and hold it very tight and in place. Um, whenever you need to like service this and pull your plunger rod out and to make sure this doesn't just fall out, there's two more holes in the bottom that we'll use with just a couple of the more of these wood, um, these wood screws that we've been using for our mechs and everything else. And those will go in there just to kind of hold that in place. So we'll get this lined up. We'll tighten this down with the three screws that came with it. Actually, they didn't come with it. Screws actually didn't come with it. I had to buy those separately from Pinball Life to make sure I got the ones with the right threads. Probably could have found them cheaper somewhere else, but I just went ahead and got them off Pinball Life just to save myself the headache of trying to figure out and guess exactly the threads. So. We'll screw those three in, we'll sandwich everything in place, we'll, we'll um, make sure it's where we want it, and then we'll go through and add the two wood screws here to hold this plate in place as well. Okay, so that's how we're gonna do it. All 
right. Looks good. Right there. Working pretty good. Okay, plunger's in. Working great. Next thing I wanna to get to is I've got a few more switches in here for the play field I wanna add in so we actually can have some sort of mode and point tracking, right? So we've got our in-lane switches, which are great, right? And we've got a switch I added here for the shot to go behind the flipper, a la Stern Star Trek, and I'm sure at least a few other machines that I can't think of, but that's the one I own. Um, and when the ball comes in here, right now with that 3D, the piece of 3D uh, printed plastic that I got here for the shooter lane for this angle here coming around, I wasn't able to print it long enough to really have a tail that adds a guide down here. So when the ball comes in, <clears throat> the ball can come in and go totally around the switch. So I've gone through and 3D printed another piece. That's basically just gonna be like an extension of that piece. It's gonna connect right onto the corner, get screwed in, and that's gonna provide a better angle to direct through the ball. I'll show you. All right, here it is, you can see it, right? So when the ball comes in behind the flipper, there's such a big gap here, the ball was often just going around the switch and not hitting it. And so I printed out this piece to kind of slide in right here and kind of, kind of connect onto the end of that other piece. And then with the screw, it'll hold it in place. And now when the ball comes down, it'll always get funneled down to make sure that it hits this switch. Okay, so I'm gonna drill a hole and screw that through. And then the other thing we wanna make sure we're tracking are our orbit shots. I have no switch anywhere for this orbit. So I need to add a switch for the orbit to make sure we can tell when the ball's gone around the orbit. We'll also need one around over here for the left orbit, okay? So I need to add both of those. I am gonna be adding switches onto my ramps as well. And so I've actually got, I've come up with a different way to 3D print this piece and this piece, these two connectors, I'll reprint out with a little holder for a switch when the ball comes by. It'll have a mechanical switch, not an opto. And yeah. So those are the switches we're gonna add, right? So we're gonna screw this part in. We've gotta cut out, <laughs> it'll be kinda ugly like that one again. We've gotta cut out a spot for our orbit switch. We've gotta kinda lift up the play field and see where we have room to add that switch and not be like going straight into like where there's a, you know, like a, a flipper mech, cause there's a couple of those around here. But we should be able to be good to do that down here along the side, I think, unless I've got a circuit board there. I need to add one over here as well. I'm gonna, I need to make sure it's up past where this, so the ball comes out of here, it doesn't hit that switch. That or else maybe I need a second switch. It might be good to know when the ball comes back down out of here. Anyways, I definitely need to add one up inside here also. So when the ball is coming around, that can be counted as an orbit shot versus the ball coming down off this tray and counting as an orbit shot. So, oh, and then I installed my spinner, but I never wired the dang thing. So I need to go through and add the wiring and route the wiring down. And then I also want to put in a post or two here to prevent the ball from getting stuck underneath this ramp also. Okay, so we're gonna hurry and bust through all of that right now.
All right, all the Bondo's dried, everything's set, all the right screws and bolts have finally shown up from Pinball Life, so we're ready to connect our back box to the cabinet. This is the big freaking deal. At least I'm excited about it. All right, so yeah, let's do it. All right, so first thing we have here are the hinges. You should have two of these, okay? And then you've got these, what are these called? They're like the, the receiver nuts. There's a name for them, I forget. But if you're using a, um, if you're borrowing a donor cabinet from somebody, these are already gonna have holes here drilled in the right spot for these. And you've got two carriage bolts with the square ends that are gonna lock into these and they're gonna use a big old Allen to tighten those down. Let's see what size. Yeah, it's gonna be a six. But yeah, I mean, one goes inside the other, right? Really simple. With the bracket in between. <clears throat> Oops, almost did the wrong one on this side. They have a flange. The flange is gonna be pointing away from the cabinet, okay, like this, so it can slide up and down cleanly. So you're also gonna need for the other end some quarter inch um, carriage bolts that will go into the square holes on these things and into your back box. All right, we'll line that up and then we'll get a washer and a nylon locking nut. Now, one thing you're gonna notice with these side pieces here, these hinges and these bolts, is you're gonna be like, oh, there's a little bit of wiggle room, Steve. And like, I've gone through and I've looked around the different machines, all the modern Sterns have like a little bushing they have around here, almost like a washer, right? To kind of help uh, make sure this doesn't slide one direction and start rubbing against the wood. Um, and even the older ones, like on my Twilight Zone, there's a similar small little washer in there. Um, and so, I didn't see that anywhere on Pinball Life's site, but it makes sense. You want to make sure that things are kind of staying, you know, spaced just enough to where this is never rubbing on the wood and the artwork, right? I think you, we've all probably seen that on older machines where it kind of gets warped or, or twisted or bent and it starts rubbing on the cabinet. So we want to avoid that for sure. Um, so I'm either going to 3D print a bushing or I'll look and see if there is some standard bushing online maybe I can buy and we'll, we'll slide in and it goes in between the wood and the hinge here just to make sure that things kind of stay centered. And when I was first putting it in, had to kind of wiggle around the back box until I got everything lined up just right for those holes in the back. But once we're there, we're, we're pretty good right now to have it just the way it is. But long-term, I want to have those bushings. I want to make sure the side of my cabinet isn't getting all rubbed and scraped up. So, but yeah, there we go. And uh, obviously it needs artwork. <laughs> once we get back from the show, it'll all get disassembled. Once we're final, I've got a little bit of Bondo to do on the side of this cabinet also, some cleanup and then we'll totally pull everything out of it and we'll sand it a little bit more, we'll prime it, we'll get a nice um, black color all the way around on, on every piece and then we'll get our decals on and then we'll do a final reassembly. But we're ways off from that still. Okay, but we got the back box in and one of the main reasons I wanna get the back box in is I wanna go through next and while my 3D printer's running, still got some switches for some ramps, you can see things are taken out of the play field. Um, but I want to go through and start figuring out this video controller and within MPF and get it to where we go from having the score on the laptop to the score showing up here because I would really love to have that working for the for the show. So we'll have to run an HDMI cable down and out through the back to the laptop to get it going but that's what we're going to play with next. I almost forgot before we do that 
The other thing we want to go through and do is to make sure this doesn't just fall forward, we need to put a latch of some sort on the back. And there's different types of locking setups. The new sterns have bolts that go through into the back, right, that hold them in place. Um, for right now, I'm just using the, the horrible, but cheap and simple method of the old latch and the little clip. And that's gonna be good enough for security for right now. I've got one of the roto locks, but this cabinet wasn't made for it. And so I've gotta like do some stuff with the wood in the cabinet in the back box before it could support the roto lock, um, if you're familiar with that. But anyways, this will be our simple little latch we're gonna use for right now. So I need to hurry and, and throw that on. It's really simple. I'll explain it because it's gonna be hard for me to go through and show it with the camera, I think. I'll explain it. If it works out better, I'll kill this part. But this part is gonna go on the back box. Right down here at the bottom, okay? And it's gonna overlap. It's gonna slide past the back box just a little bit. It's not flush with the edge. It just barely goes past it. And then this latch is gonna go on the back down here and it'll grab it. All right, so, so there's this, okay? And then this screws and see how it's got a little bit of a lip coming past the board. So then when we lift this up, there's like almost no light back here, I apologize. This flips up and then just latches in place like so. Okay, and now, now it's sturdy and won't fall down on accident. So no instructions came with this. I'm assuming these are a couple of spare cables. We have a connector really on one end. The other one, I don't know, just slides in. My eyesight is not what it used to be. Ah. Okay, I wanna make sure I do it the right direction. This has a little, little tab right in here, this is where that cable is gonna go in. And then the little tiny black piece, if you can see that, it just, it flips up just barely. I'm assuming, I'm gonna take one end of this and either blue side up or blue side down, embedding blue side up. It will just barely slide in. I'm assuming, then I'll push the black down, that's gonna like crimp it down in place. But I'm gonna look up on Amazon <laughs> through the reviews to make sure I get the right direction before I do it and like ruin one of the only two I have. Yeah, the other side, I've seen these before, is metal. And the other side, similar thing in here. The back of the monitor's got kind of a similar little contraption here. Wow, this is really testing my eyesight. I'm getting old, guys. I have to get my magnifying lens. It's embarrassing. Magnifying glass. For all of us old folks out there. Okay, so from the picture, it shows the blue side up coming into this guy. Hey, do you have any idea how to connect super, super microscopic little connectors onto LCD screens? No, but I can try it out. So I found this picture. So I'm like, okay, ribbon. Goes in here, blue side up, blue side down. Blue side up, obviously. That doesn't help me. Well, it helps me. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an old man. So now I'm guessing this. From that direction? Yeah. Yeah, just go like that. I mean, like, yeah, I mean, I feel like that's connected, but we might want to like seat it a little bit more. Okay. I just don't want to like break things. But I, I think for the most part that is in. Okay. Yeah, that seemed pretty secure. I'd have the eyes of my son-in-law help me. Because. Okay. I was not figuring this out for sure. All right. I got you heard it. Yeah. All right. So we will try that. I think that's in. All right, so I gotta catch this up on where we're at. Kind of lost track of everything I've been trying to document, but like there's so much stuff to get done before the show. I've just kind of been going at whatever order parts and things have been working out and my 3D printer hasn't been failing whatever else. So. I think last segment I recorded was we put the back box in and that's all good and secure. And we're missing the power cords that are showing up tomorrow to actually hook it up so we can actually maybe try to display something on that. I spent some time going through on my code, cleaning up a bunch of bugs and typos that actually would execute and kind of caught up to where my code was last time. So I'm still working on a slideshow. Um, so I can't really show you the code quite yet, 
But the next thing I want to show you is what I've been doing. I told you, I said I had a few switches I need to put in place still, right? The other main thing I needed to worry about though was being able to go through and add in switches so the software knows when we're entering a ramp. And so I was trying to figure out the best way to do that. One of the common ways within pinball machines is to have what's like a wire gate, right? So basically at the top of the ramp on the side, you have a piece of wire dropping down in that the ball hits as it goes by. And one side of that has an extra kind of like, kind of bent piece of metal right by a switch. So when the ball goes through, it'll activate the switch. So then the software knows, oh, a ball just passed by here, right? I don't have any wires. I really like, oh, I should do a wire gate. I don't have any wires and I don't know where I can get some right off the bat in time. I did have some different switches I ordered though. They're like rollover switches. So like this, a rollover switch like this, where the ball comes by. It could also be from the side, a ball comes by and right, and it knows when the ball goes by. So I was trying to figure out a way with my 3D printed ramps of how I could kind of adjust and add some sort of like little connection that would hold this switch. And I came up with a couple that I think are working pretty good, but not quite as perfectly as I would have hoped just due to the limitations of my 3D printer. Like if I could have a 3D printer just like replicate out in like a machine quality exactly what I've modeled, I'd be golden. But when you're messing with a 3D printer, you always have to worry about supports for any sort of vertical surface, right? Any overhangs. So like this piece here, for this connector of the ramp, I print it flat. So it doesn't have to worry about anything in between, it's built up the walls, right? But if I want to have something on the bottom sticking out, well then it's like a question of, do I put it on its side then to print? So that part, you know, can come out or it can get kind of funky on, you know, where you're gonna have um, supports versus where you want it to look nice and clean and smooth versus maybe rough and anyways, I'm still trying to figure all that out and came up with a couple of pieces that kind of worked but not quite as clean as I wanted. Long story short, this is kind of the idea I came up with. It's a way to mount this switch with its housing inside this bracket. You can slide it in and then I cut out a groove in the plastic where the switch can go and that way when the ball rolls by we know it's been triggered. Okay, so I need to make sure I have clearance underneath the parts for this switch and I got that on my elevated ramps no problem. Even over here on this left ramp, even over here on this left ramp when it comes up I've added a switch on the other side here so when the ball comes by we'll know it's there. Okay, and back here on the diverter and so back here on the diverter, I had the same thing. You can see I've got one underneath here and right here by the edge of this flipper. And it's just not tripping it. That's gonna be close. I've got one over here to know when the ball goes by. And now I just, the last piece I just printed out was this connector that has one that's gonna go in here, like so, once I put, put, once I put it in place. That way we'll know when the ball comes up the ramp to be able to activate the diverter at the right time. And we also know we'll know when the ball leaves on whichever direction. So we'll know whether it was a regular ramp shot that was completed or whether it was a shot to the upper play field that was completed. And our software will know which one's which. So with all that, I think now we have kind of have really all the core switches we need to do at least all of our basic modes. We'll know when ramp shots are being made. We'll know when the diverter needs to get triggered and which direction it takes outside the, the diverter, left or right. And we've got our orbits. We've got our horseshoe. Everything else, I think we're good. There might be one or two others that maybe as I'm doing the software, we'll find out, oh, if I added a switch here, it might be easier to kind of track different states. But I'm so early on in the software still that I, I don't even know what I don't know about that part. So, all right. So I'm just gonna go through and hurry, connect this ramp. Um, I need to um, wire these last couple switches. And once it's wired, then it's all back again to just play testing and making sure that works and working on the code, be able to enable showing the, the player's ball number and the score. So far, I still have not uh, figured out exactly how to get the stepper motor working inside MPF, so it's very likely when I get to the show, it'll all be playable minus the upper play field. <laughs> um, but a couple of the guys there are really good at code, and so, I don't know, maybe while I'm there at the show, we'll be able to figure it out and get it working, we'll have to see. So, anyway, that's what we're shaping up. Um, what else? I was also waiting on my 3D printer at one time. You saw we put the plunger in, now I've got the coin door in place also. So that's ready to go. I do need to get a disconnect switch in here. So that way it'll know. Right now I just have this wire jumpered together. All right, so as long as this is connected, the high power voltage flows. This needs to get added to a interlock switch that will be hit by the coin door being closed. All right, and that way the power will be cut off whenever we open the coin door. So we've got the coin door in, we've got the plunger, and we've got our apron. The back box is in. We get these last switches. We're getting really close, again, other than all the code and there'll be a lot of code. So um, 
Uh, Mike Becker, one of the other guys in the group, is like, Steve, sweet. So are you going to have like music and sounds playing? Man, I hope so. I don't know. <laughs> Hoping we'll at least have some some song playing in the background. I don't know if it'll be connected to a mode or not. Like, I just, it's hard to say. We're four days away. So cross our fingers. So as you can see, we got the game doing some basic gameplay. It's working. We got basic score being tracked on the display and all that. Um, I, have, I am having issues with two of my diverters. I burn out two of my um, coil driver um, transistors on my boards, one each on two different boards. So having to be careful with that. Um, my diverters are flipping, but they're not holding. And I'm trying to figure out why. I'm having trouble tracking that one down, but we're going to move on for a minute because we got 48 hours, so we got to hit the road. So. We'll hope we have an epiphany about the diverters, but for now I'm going to continue working on getting the screen and then hopefully the speakers all set up and connected so we can see the score and play some sort of a sound, maybe a song, ugh, through these speakers. So lots to do on all that. I was able to go through and buy some power connectors. Um, yesterday some plugs, if we can get uh, voltage going into the, into the devices. So that's what we're going to work on right now. Well, on the back of our mind, we're trying to figure out why in the world our diverters will not work. <laughs> 